Hey, how are you? This is G, and this is the video for November, and we are doing, or I am doing, Cancer 2019, November 2019, and I'm going to talk about the frequencies that are coming down, and you're going to want to listen to this entire video because there's some beautiful, beautiful gifts that are coming at the end, okay? That's like uh, at the end of the month. So we're going to begin by talking about the birth of Mars. We're going to talk about the birth of Mercury. We're going to go quickly over new moons and full moons. We're going to talk about the 1111 portal that's going to be opening up and what the hell that means and where this happens in your life and where all these things happen in the life for a Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Rising. Okay, and then that big gift at the end, the greater gift of cosmic consciousness that we're all going to get and where that's going to be happening in your life, all right? If you are new to this channel, this is all astrology. We give high-quality, free, one-time reading to every subscriber. So if you are new, comment down below. Send us your digits. Send us your birth info. We will hook you up, all right? Now, let's start at the first of the month. On the first of the month, Mars became visible. Another way of saying that is Mars came to life. Mars has been reborn. And for Cancer Ascendance, Mars is reborn in your place of family and home. It's in your fourth house, okay? The relationships, all right? Because it's in Libra. So your significant one-on-one -on -one relationships that have to do with your tribe, your family, your home, um, mom, all right? Mars is coming to life there, is being reborn there. Mars has a two and a half year cycle. What this means is that for the next two and a half year, years, yeah, yours, two and a half years, Mars will be giving you the drive, the passion, the desire, the let's do this, the ability to take action, to either acquire a home, acquire a family, do things at home that involve maybe fixing up the home or, or you know, physically purchasing a home. Um, again, it's really relationship focused because it's Venus. So it's about how do we establish a balanced home, a fair and equitable home. Mars is our drive, our desire. Mars wants to be the first one out of the gate. Mars is normally very much focused on taking action. Mars is physical. Mars being in Libra gives it more of a, let's talk about this thing, okay? Because it's in Libra, right? Libra is about compromise. So Mars understands it needs to sit down and talk things through first. And this is my high recommendation for this month. We're getting a shitload of info, a lot of good info. And not all of it's going to be 100% accurate, because we're getting information from source. We're getting information from the astral plane. We're getting information from people we know. Remember, this is all during a Mercury retrograde, folks, all right? So how do you get accurate information during a Mercury retrograde? There's a lot of miscommunications, typically. And I'm not going to go any further about a Mercury retrograde because there's a trillion other videos out there about Mercury retrogrades. But what I will do is I will bring it in where it's relevant, which is after the 21st of the month, okay? That's when I give people the big green light. But let me walk you through uh, for Cancer Ascendance, Cancer Rising, so that you understand I can tell you where you're getting good information when, when it's like, okay, it's around this topic and this is legit. No shit, but legit stuff, all right? So again, focus at the beginning of the month, but not just the beginning of the month. This is, again, with you for the next two and a half years. This Mars focused around family. Do you want to have a baby, right? <laughs> These are family issues. Do you want to be a mom, right? Okay, so you just hold on to those thoughts. Don't do anything with those thoughts. Just understand they're going to be with you, but you're going to have clarity on these things towards the end of the month, okay? Next, let's go to 11.11. 11.11 is when we have Venus, I'm sorry, Mercury lining up with the sun. They're right on top of each other, but they're, they're receiving divine angelic support from Neptune. They are receiving power from Pluto in, an, in a beautiful way. It's, an, it's a gift, okay? It's, I am going to add ease to you. 
Now this is going to happen for Cancer Ascendance. This is going to happen in your fifth house. Fascinating, isn't it? Because fifth house is children, fun, joy, creativity, romance. Fifth house is also risk-taking. I made a mention about the fifth house and when information comes in through the fifth house um, that if there was a time in my life, I am not a gambler. I do not play the lottery. I can't stand going to the casino. That's just not me. There's nothing about the atmosphere I enjoy. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't, I just, that's just me. I'm a real plain Jane. And so it's not my thing. It's not my scene. But if there was ever a time I was going to play the lottery, it would be this month. It wouldn't be, of course, until after uh, the 23rd, okay? Let me be honest with you. I would wait all the way to the end of the month. This is, I'm not recommending you do this, just so we're absolutely clear. I am saying if there was any time astrologically that I would say, damn, I might want to play some numbers this month. How do you do that? Because <laughs> I don't know how to do it, right? But I'm just saying that's the truth. Now, Realize this is a general overview. This is a general reading, okay? Um, even though it says it's a Cancer rising, Cancer ascendant, depending upon your specific chart and your birth time, it would have to do. It has to do with the degrees. You know, it has to do with is eighteen degrees. Is eighteen degrees in your fifth house? You know, you can have Scorpio in your fifth house, but the eighteen degree part of Scorpio could be in a different house. Okay, based upon the house system that I use, that, that I do my readings and all that off of. We use a tropical Placidus house system and other systems use a whole house system. They're a little bit different. And so when I'm doing these general readings, I'm, I have, I'm forced, the only way to give a general reading is to do a whole house system where it's equal houses. I don't want to go any further. It's too much details, too much information. But I just wanted to clarify all that to make sure that no one's like, well, damn, that lady on All Astrology said, I need to go and gamble. I need to play the numbers. I'm going to win big. I didn't say that. I said that if there was any time I was going to do it, this would be the time. So you just, you know, you figure that out for yourself. To me, that sounds like go buy a $1 ticket, whatever the hell that is. Don't spend like a shitload of money. Anyhow, let's move along. <laughs> so we're getting information on that day though, right? We're getting beneficial information. This is in your fifth house. It's in Scorpio. So it has a lot to do with your shared resources and relationships which you are very much bonded, where you share something on a deep, deep level. Money's pretty deep for a lot of people. It's also, you know, sex is pretty deep, can be very deep. But intimacy in general, it doesn't have to be sexual. But because this is because you have Scorpio in your fifth house, it's really hard to separate uh, fun and romance and have sex not be included in that with this with this kind of a lineup. And obviously, if you wanted to have children, this might be a very good time to try for that. Okay, now the 1111 is a gift, okay? It is a gift of information, it's a gift of knowledge. It's, it's kind of like a piece of grace being showered upon you at this time. Because we're, it's Mercury going backwards though, I am recommending for people that uh, what, you might re what you might be receiving at this time is you might, it's a lot of stuff about the past actually, right? Because Mercury's going backward and it's in Scorpio, which is deep. It's our soul stuff too, all right? So there might be, like I know when Mercury started going retrograde, I started having dreams that had people in it that I haven't seen, that I haven't, you know, even, that I don't even talk to anymore. Like we just lost contact. You know, some of those were old boyfriends, right? Some of those were people that I just, you know, and it was wild because I hadn't had dreams about these people in forever. And there was no particular reason that they were in my life, in my dreams, all, suddenly, other than the freaking Mercury retrograde in Scorpio. Got it? <laughs> so typically anybody where you've had some deep contacts, some deep commitments to, that you were bonded in some way to, they may be coming up in your thoughts. They may be coming up in your dreams. They may come back into your life. They may contact you. You might get a text message. You might get a Facebook thing. You might, they might find you on some sort of social media, right? They might find you through somebody else. But typically, uh, it, it's likely, if anything, maybe you'll connect with somebody doing a physical activity, sports, because the fifth house is our sports. Um, so there might be something there as well. And if that's the case, don't make any rash decisions. Don't go jumping into bed. Don't do doing anything that, um, again, just recognize what's going on right now. And yes, it could be a benefit, but my recommendation is to not do really anything 
as, definitely as far as making any decisions until the 21st, the 23rd of this month, because then that's when Mercury will be not only um, being born, being seen, being visible and, and, and accurate and clear, but she'll be moving direct, okay? Or he'll be moving direct, Mercury, whatever. I don't assign a gender to Mercury, but I would definitely wait, okay? And so just utilize this energy in the best way possible. And I have been, for me, it's more about, I see it as it's it's a month of taking in information. It's a month of research, of saying, wow, I'm getting stuff from here. I'm getting stuff from over there. I'm getting information from there. And I'm just in a receiving, be in a receptive mode taking all this in, be the researcher. At the end of the month, we'll be in a really stable place where we can sit down and look at everything, put it all on the table and be like, okay, now I have all the pieces. I can see everything. I have a much better idea now. I'm not looking at just two or three things. I can see this and this and this and this and this and this. And with all this information in front of me, I can make a really well-informed decision. Whew, that one got me winded. All right, so let's move. The very next day after 11, 11, there's this full moon. Now, the full moon should be helpful because, of course, as always, it sheds light, but it's a full moon in Taurus. And it happens exactly opposite of your 11, 11 incident, <laughs> your 11, 11 experience in your fifth house. This happens in the house of friends. It's in your social circles. It's in your groups. It is, it is where it's the people you connect with, groups of people, they are your tribe, okay? Um, they have similar likes that you do, right? When I got involved with this, it was political people. It was doing ghost hunting. It was, getting, you know, some people go and they do crafting with groups of people. It's, it's, it's that, that's where that's going to occur. So you get clarity. That adds clarity. It stabilizes the information from the 11th, okay? It gives you a more, well, more well-rounded vision, which makes a lot of sense. If you're in the house of one-on-one, -on -one, right? It's just you and one other person, intimate stuff. And then like the next day you get to be around your friends, you get to share experiences, they talk and you're like, oh wow, yeah, okay. You know, you get a, you get a greater perspective of things and you get a, a more objective perspective, which typically is super helpful. All right, now let's move down to the 23rd of November. All right, November 23rd. This is the day that makes me excited. I mean, 11-11 is exciting. The 23rd I really love because Mercury is now direct. And we are getting information on this day from source. This is when Jupiter and the galactic center are on top of each other with the planet Venus. These are all beautiful, benevolent uh, uh, energies, okay? Uh, Jupiter is super positive. Jupiter is the seeker. Jupiter is the wisdom. Jupiter sees from up above and sees the bigger picture. The galactic center is known as the father. The sun is the sun. The, the S-U-N is the is S-O-N. The galactic center is the father. Okay, so Jupiter and the galactic center are holding each other hand in hand in a fire sign in Sagittarius, which is super beautiful with, with Jupiter, because that's, well, Jupiter rules Sag. And then we've got Venus, okay? And Venus is abundance, you know, Venus is, it's harvest time, baby. It's beauty, it's peace, it's stillness. I would suggest meditating. I really would. If you can't meditate, be in a creative space. You are super creative because you have Scorpio in your fifth house, okay? Cancers, ascendants are going to usually, depending upon your specific chart, you're going to have Scorpio in your fifth house, house of creativity, right? Not just sexual creativity and being procreative. Let's, you know, you can do other things. Get in a creative mode, all right? That's just you preferably. It doesn't include anybody else. Crochet, knit, draw, paint. Do whatever it is you do. Music, whatever it is you do. Whatever gets you in that space where you escape. And you're not using alcohol or drugs, obviously. <laughs> the place where your mind becomes the most still, okay? The most present and the most receptive. The idea here is we are tuning in to the higher frequencies that are coming in. This is when grace is being showered upon us and those that are receptive and who are ready to receive shall receive, okay? So that's on the 23rd and that is happening in your place, is in your sixth house placement. So for the sixth house, this is the house of debt. Is there any credit card debt? 
Is there any debt of any kind? This is a benevolent energy that's coming. So with a benevolent energy, you may get information, how the hell to get out of debt. There may be some sort of relief sent your way, okay? There may be, you know, the sixth house is our pets. You know, the sixth house is our work. Are you maybe going to get some recognition? Typically, that would have to affect the 10th house then, which at this point, the 10th house is also fire. So if you have planets there, you could be getting recognition at this time. Sometimes recognition isn't just a verbal thing. Sometimes they're bonuses. Sometimes they're promotions. You know, I would have to see the specific chart, but the potentiality is here, okay? So you see how beautiful this is. This is gorgeous. Now, the 6th house is also... Um, what did I say? Health, I'm sorry. Can't believe I didn't say health. Six health is health. So you may be getting information on, you know, something that has to do with health and has to do with maybe an improvement of your own health, an improvement in some, somebody else's health. You know, maybe you may be getting some wisdom in, some information, how you can be a health guru for somebody else, right? Just, just be open to receive. Don't have specific ways of how this gift has to look. It's when we do that that we don't realize. We are not able to perceive, okay? You don't want to be in that situation. You want to know that you received, right? But a lot of times our perception, if it's not an alignment, well, we don't realize we got anything, okay? You want to be able to perceive that you received. That's the 23rd, cosmic downloads of information. I really believe this has a lot to do with our soul bursting through. I really do. I talked earlier about letting these uh, emotional bodies, pain bodies, um, letting that which no longer serves me go, okay? That which the soul says, hey, this is our purpose now. That we needed it at one time, we no longer need it. And the soul kind of bursts through because more of the physical releases, more of the emotional goes away, is burned off and melts off. And now the soul stands up and says, this is our purpose. This is why we came. This is it. So please be open, be receptive, take time to be alone. 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, and listen, okay? All right, so on the 26th, we have a new moon, okay? The new moon is happening for Cancer Ascendance, I've got your new moon occurring. Where the hell is Sag? Oh, I'm sorry. It's happening in the house, the same house, the house of work, of job, of health, of pets, of debt. The new moon's happening there for you. So you understand what I'm saying, what I said at the beginning of the video? This whole month, there's all this information coming in. So when it comes down to the end of the month, we're in a really good place to set an intention. And this intention can be a reality. This isn't like some, oh, I got to wait 50 years for this intention. This is a really great time to manifest. I truly believe this because on this day, Venus goes into Taurus. Okay, this is, I'm sorry, Venus goes into Capricorn. This is beautiful. This is a great placement. This is making, making the abundance tangible and material. Okay, take advantage of this. Use the power, use the energy Tune into the frequencies and just remember, use this month as a way of doing research and taking in information because at the end of the month, it's like power play time. You are given knowledge. You're given wisdom. You are given the potentiality to elevate your soul's frequency, to elevate, just to evolve. This is ascension. This is the possibility for ascension, okay? Ascension is nothing more than taking a hold of your awareness, your consciousness, and saying, you know what? It's time. It's time for me to grow. And your soul's like, yes, let's go. All right, Cancer, that's a wrap. Thank you.